Hi, my name is Donna Reed, and welcome to Syncopation. The Sam Bruton Group is here with us this evening, and they have their own version of the program, Syncopation. Uh, Sam, I think if you'll, if One, you'll start two, it. One, two, three, Syncopation. It took a lot of, lot of preparation for that. We worked up special. This is Sam Bruton of the Sam Bruton Group, and Karen Green, and Tony Stiglitz, and Chris Hill, and welcome. And thank you. Thank you. Tell us for what's us. been, well, thank you for being with us this evening. Tell us what's been going on with uh, the Sam Bruton Group. Ah. Quite a lot. <laughs> um, we were just talking about the first time we played. I guess it was about, about two years ago. Mm -hmm. two, um, was in the fall. I'd known Karen from before that. We actually met playing uh, you know, like a wedding or something, very inspiring sorts oh, of games. Well, but you, you weren't bride and groom. You just met at a, at a wedding. Play. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, just, right. just wanted to be we sure. We met at our wedding. These are the kids, you know. You're all, okay. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so we uh, started playing. Uh, Chris was there with us uh, from the start. We, we were just <laughs> remembering that we uh, first gig we worked up all everything we knew in like a three-hour rehearsal. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Karen, we were trying the to remember the, the song. The story of the band. <laughs> yeah, the story the of the last band. Last-minute band. Um, in fact, one of the songs that we played is called Last Minute for that reason. Uh -huh. um, anyway, so we've been together about two years. Uh, we've been playing. Um, every weekend, play a lot of the clubs around in, in the area. Um, and out. And out of the area. And Where out of the area do you get a chance to go to besides the Triangle? We went to Charlotte. Yeah, we played mm -hmm. Charlotte. We're playing at um, a city stage festival in Greensboro. Oh, out, so. wonderful. That's yeah. great. So you've been together about how long, the four of you? Four of us have been together two, almost yeah. a year and a half. Yeah. I noticed during the sound check that, that all of you communicate through your eyes and facial expressions, and some musicians don't do that, mm -hmm. and others do. Why do you think that works for your group? I mean, did, was that an automatic thing from, from the moment you started gigging together, that there was a certain amount of camaraderie, and you, you knew what the next one was going to do, and kind of filling in if someone wasn't really there musically or something? Or Do you notice that with your group more than I think at the level of this music, that's like the only way you can really communicate, because uh -huh. you know, you're too busy with your instrument, and everything's flying by so fast, like that if you like what's going on, and and you can anticipate, you know, what might happen next. I mean, we, we've been playing together long enough that we can get a pretty good idea of what we're each going to do because, you know, right. we've set each other up for certain improvisational segments and all of a sudden it's going to something completely different. And, and usually it's just acknowledgement that either, yeah, that was great or uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a nice chance. Now, but. your original music, who does most of the writing? Do all of you? No. They all point to Sam. <laughs> 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 I, I wish these guys would do more than they do. Well, we assist. We yeah, assist yeah, with rhythmic I mean, arrangements. You know, I'll, I'll come with an idea to rehearsal, uh -huh. and we'll all put in our, our two cents worth. And you know, it's a group project, so by the time we get it finished, but uh, it's a collaborative thing. Did, uh, Chris said something about about spontaneity, and uh, I think that's one of the most rewarding things about playing mm -hmm. jazz. And mm -hmm. it's also one of the most um, rewarding things about playing together with these people. You know, is um, I've heard all my my ideas, you know, <laughs> right, <laughs> usually, right. <laughs> uh, and we're playing, and, and somebody else will do something, and, and then that'll just trigger this sort of chain mm -hmm. reaction. I, mean, I think it has a lot to do with our popularity too. I mean, it, well, it could be conceited, but I it's think right, the it's band television, is popular. Do you know, say it. <laughs> uh, people enjoy seeing. I mean, an audience enjoys seeing four people on a stage just. Wing it most of the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, having a great time. Yeah, we get a lot of comments from people that say they enjoy not only the music, but they like to watch us on stage. You know, I did during the sound check, and I think all of us here in the studio. A lot of our it. songs evolve uh, as we're playing out on the gig. We don't rehearse the songs like to death and get them mm -hmm. down, so that way there's a lot of room there for each person or all of us together mm -hmm. for the song to come together in some certain way. Do all of you have different types of influences too? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Probably it's all over the map, yeah. What are yours saying? As various as you would want. Uh, boy, I started out just a regular classical piano, in fact, in, until I got to, to uh, college age. I started college playing a classical music scholarship. That was mm -hmm. really mostly what I was, was into, and I went from there sort of to the other end of the spectrum, yeah. to Elton John, and then <laughs> and jazz then. was like sort of somewhere in the middle, in a way. So it, w it wasn't really until, oh, I don't know, the last seven or eight years I started really listening and trying to play jazz. Um, seriously, one of the most um, rewarding aspects of jazz is, and one of the reasons I think we're all interested in jazz, is it's constantly rewarding.
rewarding and yet challenging too. You know, most of the musicians love to play jazz because it's 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 difficult to it's difficult to be spontaneous mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and try and you know at the spur of a moment just just create. You know, but, it, but that's what makes it so rewarding. Do you think that's why jazz music is kind of becoming more popular all of a sudden? I mean, it always was to a certain sect. I mean, people really, mm -hmm. you know, knew jazz musicians and they followed it over the years. And now, all of a sudden, maybe the past five years, and it might be longer, yeah. you know, there's been just this instant popularity with jazz music. Do you think that might be the reason for it? I think that's, that's probably part of it. I mm -hmm. think people that really um, follow it and, and really appreciate it, appreciate that, that aspect of it as much as anything, sure. Mm -hmm. Karen, who are uh, your influences? Um, it's really funny because I. Because one of my, what was that? What was Bruce that? Randolph. Bruce Randolph. Yes, you did say that prior to the, uh, the taping. I'm sleeping with this picture under my pillow. Right? <laughs> uh, it's really funny because people ask me that all the time. And um, when I was in high school, I started listening to Mayor Ferguson, who is a trumpet player, but uh -huh. had all these great sax players that played for him: Andy McIntosh and Mike Migliori and Bruce Johnston and. And I used to get up every morning before I went to school, and for like an hour, I'd eat breakfast and listen to, to this stuff till I wore out some of these albums, you know, just listen to these guys play. So and you knew at an early age you were going to be uh, a sax player? From about player. the time I was a sophomore in high school. Really? And I just really got turned on to it then. Uh -huh. so you just picked it up and, and, and well, felt I it started, too? I started on clarinet in the fifth grade. Uh -huh. And then when I got in high school and got interested in jazz, I was like, well, clarinet's not real versatile unless you're playing Dixieland or something, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. But you so, do uh, use it on some of your sets, though, I see. You, you oh, that's a soprano for... set. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I'm strictly Do you think you'll that. use a clarinet anytime just to I don't know. do something? Uh, you know what I've been wanting? Karen, Karen also plays some harmonica. Yes. I'd love yes. to get her to play, oh, that some, would be great. play some blues harmonica sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> That we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Next time, you can come back and you can pull it out and just, yeah. Now that it's on film, she's committed to it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. You're here first. Tony, who are some of your influences? Um, grew up listening, start off with the Beatles, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I grew up, like all the, you hear the old drummer's story of banging on the pots and pans mm -hmm. when I was a kid and oatmeal boxes down in the basement. You really did that to I your family, huh? I did. I don't <laughs> That's why they live in they, Indiana. No, <laughs> <laughs> okay, move away, please. Um, but my brother plays guitar, okay. and he he was really, he's one year older than me, so I kind of followed him around and picking up everything that he was listening mm -hmm. to. And we would play together all the time. And like I said, Beatles, I mean, Sam doesn't always say this, but I used to watch the monkeys all the time. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, love that. Um, I mean, I love just basic rock and roll stuff. And then mm -hmm. I also started listening to like people like John Bond and Sir Copeland of the Police mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, Phil Collins. And that sort of listening to Phil Collins got me into a band, Brand X, that he played. Mm -hmm. and it's a little more mm -hmm. towards the jazz and fusion. Then really it's only been the last two years I've been really listening and trying to play jazz. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people, wonderful people I've been playing with have helped me out and pointed people out to me. and. Um, like William, <laughs> thanks, <Chris. laughs> so my uncle, uh, William Kennedy of the uh, the Yellow Jackets, uh -huh, uh -huh. a wonderful player, and I had a chance to meet him. He's a very nice uh, man. Um, Vinny Caliuto, who's played from everybody from Frank Zappa to Johnny mm -hmm, Mitchell, mm -hmm. to uh, you know, you name him. He's a great player. Um, uh, Joe Morello, from Straight Ahead, from Dave Brubeck, uh, just a wonderful. So do you think you bring more of a rock edge more than anybody yeah, else here? Now, well, everybody brings their own little mm -hmm. edge of music, mm -hmm. be it country or classical. Yeah, I think, I think that's one of the things that uh, attracted Sam was, mm -hmm. well, it was my rock influence. And But I'm trying to get away from that to a point, trying mm -hmm. to play more, uh, be a more sensitive player. Mm -hmm. And it, it just takes time. And it does. Th I think that's one of the things that's, not to, not to interrupt Tony, but uh, one of the things that's been happening interestingly to jazz as a whole is that it's become a lot more open to a lot of different influences, you know, right. African influences yes. and Brazilian and, yeah. you know, all, there's all sorts of, of currents making themselves mm -hmm. known now. It's, it's, it's great. Maybe that's why its popularity is just zooming, because it's, it's bringing different kind of cultures into the music and, yeah. and uh, it just makes a nice just a nice sound for everybody to enjoy instead of sounding just like um, a Benny Goodman sound, say, or something <laughs> right, right. like that. Not to, I mean, that's wonderful too, but it just gives a little, you know, rock music always had some diversity and so did country music, and I think classical did too, but jazz was always 
that that one particular sound, yeah. and now it's it's kind of branching off, so it sounds sounds pretty good. Chris, how about your influences? My influences are about as broad as <laughs> they can get. <laughs> I, I originally, back in elementary school, going into junior high school, wanted to play drums so badly I could just taste it. But unfortunately. Uh, when the band director for the junior high school came around to have people sign up <laughs> as to what instruments they wanted to play, <laughs> I, I, know, I, know, I, know, I had to choose something else. And the only other thing I could think of I wanted to play was saxophone, but they wouldn't let me start on a saxophone. Huh. Did they so tell I you why? No, I reason? guess maybe because you figure your your mouth is too small for the mm -hmm. mouthpiece or something. I don't know why. But but you have to have a big mouth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's why. I wanted to play. Uh, so I played clarinet for years, and then I finally got a saxophone. I played saxophone all through high school, and uh, I was playing jazz on saxophone, and I think I was getting pretty good at it. But for some reason, at that time, I just lost interest in it, and I started playing the bass. Uh, towards the last couple of years, junior, senior year in high school, and my influences on bass were basically, basically, bass players that did not play it in the traditional bass role. I always wanted to improvise and be spontaneous on the instrument. I never was really, I don't think, all that proficient at it until recently when I started learning jazz. But I didn't, I didn't pick up the bass and play jazz at all. I played, I didn't really play anything. It was. Um, um, my earliest influences were also fusion bands like Brand X mm -hmm. and um, drummer Bill Bruford. He had an incredible band mm -hmm. named Bruford, and there's a bass player to play with that band, Jeff Berlin. Um, these guys, you know, for me, not ever having played the bass before, pick it up and try and learn the bass lines of these people, it's, it's a pretty astounding feat to do, but I think I was able to at least figure out that, you know, I wanted to do something more than the traditional bass role. Mm -hmm. But I, I, it's funny because as, as I as I played the bass over the, t over the course of time, I've become, you know, once I think I got a lot of ideas out and really was getting busy on the instrument, I realized that, well, there's certainly something to say for the traditional role of the bass player. Right. And I think I'm really reaping the most benefit now from, from looking back to the basics and mm -hmm. thinking that, you know, you need to be more of a supportive rhythm section player, which is why I'm completely grateful to uh, a lot of the great drummers that I've been able to play with, Tony included. Over the last couple of years, it's, it's an them. incredible connection, and if I can't make that connection with the drummer, um, I have a terrible time. I mean, it's really very, it's it's very easy to, to, uh, I don't know, to be, to to feel like you're going to do something normal, right. and uh, I just don't want to do that. I want to do something exciting, and I want to get together with a good drummer and really do something that people don't really expect to hear. And uh, you know, obviously, I want to make mistakes, and I have, and I still do, and, and that's the way you learn. Yeah, Two so. this year, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Any artist has some one person that really spurred them on, be it a family member or right. another musician, or maybe it's someone that they're in the band with. You know, even among the four of you, there might be new things coming up between you that you're like, oh, wow, this is a new thing I didn't learn before, or I didn't know how to do. And you know. Yeah, that, that happens a lot. I mean, it, um, I've learned a heck of a lot playing with, with these guys, mm -hmm. and especially Karen. We, you know, the way it is uh, playing the instruments we do, we have the bulk of the solo work, although it's great working with, with these guys because they can take up, pick up some of that right. as, as well. But you know, Karen um, is a really inspiring player, and, and she responds very well, very well to the people and the other energy in the band, mm -hmm. and, and so it's, it's something that really builds on itself and we feed off each other. I feel like I'm learning every time we play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the first time I played with Sam, we uh, <clears throat> I felt like we just really locked in. It's, you know, I, I looked for someone like that forever. You know, somebody mm -hmm. that that kind of has the same ideas you do as far as where you're going. But you know, he's just um, Sam's one of the, the best musicians I've ever worked with, and I just feel unfortunate oh, to think it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Nothing is what happens tonight, right? When you get a chance to really hear. Let's hear it to you. Uh, uh, that means a lot when you, you know you can walk in with people like that and uh, keeps it interesting. The way Sam and I met was really funny. I was. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm a graduate student in philosophy. Uh, I saw that in I, your bio. Yeah, which is how I moved to, moved to North Carolina, and uh, I think it was my it was my first time teaching a class. I was teaching logic. Um, and I had this very bright but but somewhat under motivated student. Gosh, <laughs> that be the bass player? No, no. No. <laughs> Don't underestimate me. Don't say somewhat. No, <laughs> it, it started out getting A's, which became all right. A's, thank you. And you you can catch catch the drill. And then like a year, I had no idea at the time that he was a musician, and he 
didn't know what I was either. A year later, I walked into a club and he was playing. I'm like, oh my God, that's, you know, that guy, right? <laughs> that's Chris. And uh, it was great. And then he, Sam called me up and we had some really fun trio gigs. Yeah. We did some wedding receptions. We did uh, something at a small <laughs> Restaurant, I think it was, it was you know, ten people barely listening to us, but we had a great time. I think, <laughs> fun. I Karen, I remember seeing Karen play years ago, and I didn't know anything about jazz, and I was asked to sit in with a, a, a large band that she was in. I think it was probably seven guys playing, and I was asked to read jazz charts and improvise. I didn't know what was going on. I could barely, you know, get by the music just because I mean, I was trained on saxophone, and I could read on that instrument, and I could get rhythmic notation. But mm -hmm. in terms of the music, I didn't know what was going on, but I knew I loved it. I knew I loved it. I knew it was something I wanted to eventually be able to do. And then years later, I'm playing with her. I said, wait a minute, I recognize you. <laughs> and I knew she was great then. It was phenomenal playing with her for the first time. And, and uh, that was definitely, um, we, we the, the three of us, I think, sang really well, too. And then the Fort Wayne Tony was at That was just, it was yeah. obvious that something really positive happened. We met by accident at a wedding reception playing yeah. a job. We met Tony. We met Tony playing. I had heard about Karen and Sam. and. Uh, went to play a wedding with uh, a, a local <laughs> artist that <laughs> uses a lot of different players, and they, they run. Are the names changed? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, these guys are on the gig, and uh, we we just hit it off. Tony to 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 was worried it was going to be a real stuffy gig. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they start playing, and these guys were just like yeah. hamming it up, you know, the whole time, and. And got into good spirits later in the night, and we just we had it on for a bit. Like, you gotta play with us, and I says, I want to play with you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had more time to talk with you. But please come again to oh, uh, Six Stations. So We'd love to have you back, and um, I'm sure our viewers will look for the Sam Bruton Group around town. All right, right. we'll Thank be there. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us this evening, and uh, we hope to see you again next month. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Sing. <laughs>